All right, guys. Adventure Brad here, putting this e-bike together and playing with the mount. If I line up two holes, well, that ain't gonna work. That's obviously too tight. I can't even clip the battery on. So if I move it up to where I only get one hole, yeah, the battery will fit. But that's ugly, and it's only one hole. So what I want to do is I want to put it right on this tape line. I decided my battery will fit and click in there, but there's no holes. What do you do when there's no holes and you need holes to fill? Well, we're Adventure Brad, and uh, as much as we like duct tape, bailing wire, super glue, uh, electrical tape, and everything else that fixes things in place, there's a time and place for them. And this is not the time nor place. So what we have here are these little fasteners called rib nuts. These things are pretty awesome. Nut zerts, rib nuts, blind nuts. Uh, they're called a few different things. Um, yeah, this is what we're gonna install. I'm gonna show you how to properly lay out where your battery needs to go. That's gonna be a lot of you guys just making sure it's in the right place. Measure once, measure twice, measure three times. Measure again because extra holes in your frame are no good. And then I'm gonna show you how to mark and drill these out to the proper size. And uh, the one thing about this is, Yes, we're drilling in the frame, but no, it's not really as big of a deal as you think it is. A round hole is actually what's used in the aircraft when there's a crack running down. The proper procedure, according to AC uh, 2023, 20, oh man, I can't remember the AC right now. Anyways, there's an actual thing that shows how to do it, but when you have a crack, you drill a hole at the end of it, and that stops the crack, period. The crack don't move any further. Round holes have been used for the longest time in race cars, drag racing, all that for lightning. Um, when it's round, there's no spot for a stress riser. So make sure when you drill it, you drill a nice, round, smooth hole. If you get a square hole or, I don't know, you use a something, a nail to pound through, it's just, one, it probably won't grab, and two, that's where you'll cause a problem. But if you drill a nice, round hole and inside this rib nut, the way that I'm going to show you here, you'll have no problems. You'll be able to get all three located. So you have the maximum strength that you're going to get from your bracket and your e-bike will be that much happier. All right, let's do this. So take the time to line everything up. Like I said, measure, measure, measure a whole bunch of times. I put masking tape. This was my limit. Uh, it worked out that the bottom boss here this nub pressed against here was like the perfect distance to give me just a little bit of roomage on the back of my battery here so i knew i wasn't too tight but i wanted to keep it down as low as possible um the way i came up with this is i just stuck the screws to the back in the bolts and i stuck the ruler on and i drew up each side don't ask me how it ended up slightly tapered. I don't know what happened there, but it's good enough for who it is. Um, then I marked out, just put little faint dots and then went over, I don't know where that one came from. And then I just went over it again. This one, I need to be a little on the high side. So that's what the little miniature arrows for. And then that way I could pop this thing on and I gotta hit the center of each of those parallel lines. And that gives me three good screws. So uh, let's go center punch some holes and screw things down and go from there. All right, so once you have uh, all your lines marked, you'll go through and center punch everything. And this is actually the second round for me, which doesn't hurt a bit. Make sure you get a nice spot. You can do that with a punch and a hammer, but there's not a whole lot of room to swing a hammer. So next off, we're just going to Reach in there a drill bit. Oh, baby. And the warranty, warranty is void. All right. So drill your holes out. And then um, once you get fairly close, you could use something like this unit bit. I love these things. They cut nice round circles. And uh, this one's mismarked because I wanted 11 32nd hole. So I marked a 3 8 shoulder above it. And then I took my calipers to measure it. And see, I would have screwed it too big. 
uh, so I just sharpied around and that's one really handy trick as this thing's spinning around to see which one you're drilling at use that but on stuff like this on this sort of project I highly recommend you go ahead and get one of these unibits um, yeah they're just super duper handy drill your holes out step them up with the unit bit and then I'll show you how to put in the nut zerk all right now here's the important part the part that you've all been waiting for so how to install this um you can see i already got one in here i was practicing my take technique before i showed you guys this uh, just made sure i had all my tools right and could line up the camera and everything good so yeah you, you have your nuts are like i did in this one i just stuck a bolt in and a washer and i carefully tightened it up the reason why i did it that way is because i could kind of bind this part here now this part here billows out there's only threads in this non serrated part the serrated parts designed if you look down in here to billow out so when you tighten this against this this center part squishes out and that's what grips everything well when you start these things i've never been lucky enough to drill a perfect enough hole where this kind of snugs down in there um, now you don't want a big sloppy hole but you want it to just fit so the way you do this to get it all started um, one quick note is you could order these in metric sizes and for a bike that would be preferable to have this metrics so everything matched but they didn't so i went with these are 1032 american because that's what the hardware store had but i went with phillips head the reason being is this this comes loose my multi-tool has a phillips tool on it it doesn't have american tools but it has phillips so that's kind of like bilingual and so that'll fit for tightening this stuff up you know, like a crescent wrench is bilingual. So that's why I did this. These are 1032 blind nuts, uh, 5 8 inch long, um, 1032 bolt pan head Phillips. So that's that. So the way you go to install this thing is, um, if you're smart and you thought the things out, obviously I don't, you get the grade eight bolt that's long enough to go through here, uh, not stainless, grade eight, plus, uh, external star washer an internal one won't really work an external one a beefy one and one more 1032 size would be better um a nut that just fits over the outside of this not too big and then all it really needs to be is a bolt up to there and then what you do is just put a little grease on the threads here this one's already pretty greased from the last job you just don't want any golden and line all this up and the way this works is you take your wrench and you put this into the frame, so into the frame, and you put the wrench in, and then you tighten the nut up here, or the bolt up into the nut, not letting this or this spin. When you don't let the wrench spin, it holds the hex nut, if it's the right size, and that gives friction to the top of this, and the cool thing is, is it just works. So get it all steady, make sure that you're pushing down into the bolt, uh, that you're holding it all square you know like I said that's why I practiced this off camera so I wouldn't be nervous talking to you guys in front of me but I'm still wobbling around uh, and you just kind of run it all down and it's really a feel thing you'll feel it kind of tighten up it gets snug and it's almost like you're gonna strip the bolt out or something's getting squishy and then right then you see how it starts to just like, I can't get out of the hole now, it's billowing up. So this is where it's really critical that you're pushing down and holding it square. Because if not, it won't sit straight. Uh, so I'm just running around and you can kind of feel it. it. It broke right there. So meaning it, it, was, it was going, it was going and going and then it started to billow out. So the pressure got less. So you got to pay attention now that it's billowing out, it's coming against the back side of it's pulling up against the inside of the frame. So at this point, this is where you just want to kind of snug it down till, and there was probably only about a half inch difference in turn from when I felt it billow out, suddenly relax on the tension to when it's snugged up. And if you miss that point, you will strip the thing out and over tighten it. The cool thing about these rib nuts is is you're better off leaving them a little bit on the loose side to get go because it's a lot easier um you could go back in and tighten these things up obviously like i did to this one down here no problem 
Um, and even the act of tightening something down onto it helps hold it in place. That's what makes them so cool. But if you over tighten it, strip it out, or spin it in the frame, you've done nothing but made yourself mad. So look at that. You've just installed a rivet nut. Um, you know, a dollar a piece, couple dollars, way better than hose clamps, looks a lot cleaner. Let me put this last one on here down at the bottom, and then I'll show you guys everything. I'll bolt it up. And there you guys go. A properly installed e bag battery mount. And then I got these all the way at the end. It came with some little rubber spacers. Did only two of them because just plan on using the bottle holder. So I put those at the end for stability. I put a washer in the middle here to space up, you know, to get so there wasn't a gap here. Tighten that all up. Uh, I'm probably gonna shove a piece of rubber in here for now, but eventually I'll 3D print something cool more than likely just because that's me. I don't like how they left this unsupported out here. But there she is, and for the moment of truth, literally the first time I've done this. All right, she's down. Clickety, clickety. Uh, a little tighter, there's light through there. But apparently I didn't have it on its mount when I measured this up. But there she is, e-biked up. And you guys may know why I'm uh, Wondering why I'm going from in the house here to out in the garage and stuff because it's hotter than the devil's armpit outside right now. Uh, so I'm trying to avoid the outside while I get this knocked out. So hopefully I can go play tomorrow. I've got the day off. So anyways, you all have fun. Uh, this is Adventure Brad. I hope you learned something from this. If you have questions, comments, if you have different ways of doing this, different thoughts on like your own little homemade nut puller jobby thing um put it in the comments down below uh the the tool to do this is pretty expensive it's well 100 200 bucks somewhere in the way um which is a lot when you're doing if you're doing it all day your shop that's fine but when you're doing it like this it's that's stupid um this works out well it's a perfect it's an incredibly robust way there's no rattles no creaks i love that that is the way to put it on your bike screw that hose clampy stuff Anyways, Adventure Brat, out.